generous, good-hearted people I've ever met in my life. Uh, he was a person who did favors for the mob. In turn, the mob did favors for him. We viewed him as a messenger boy, and that's all we ever viewed Sinatra as being. Uh, the favor that he received from the Reagan administration, we believe, was a very damning, very dangerous situation. Uh, because, again, whenever they got together, it's difficult for us to believe that some, there was some potential for favors to be received by organized crime. Again, it was in the midst of all of this that the investigation of MCA's uh, corruption in the recording industry was killed, that the investigation of the mafia's penetration of Hollywood was killed. And so we always viewed the Reagan-Sinatra relationship as being extremely misleading. I think most, most people who have studied Sinatra and who have studied the mob would say that Sinatra has more of a fascination with mob. It was almost like the mobsters. It was almost like he wanted to be one or, uh, without actually doing the illegal thing. Sinatra was asked about those photos of him with organized crime figures. But I never had anything to do with them business-wise. Uh, rarely, rarely socially. Uh, no, no connection really whatsoever. Kirk Douglas spoke of Sinatra's loyalty and generosity. Another witness, actor Gregory Peck. One of the greatest artists in the popular field in our century. As one of the finest men and most trustworthy, reliable, truthful men I personally have ever known. If Mr. Sinatra is a member of the Mafia, then I'm the godfather. I think he just kind of got a kick out of being around these guys. He's kind of a tough guy, you know, and uh, that's the image he kind of portrays. He just liked being around them. Whether he would ever do actually anything illegal with them or for them, I don't know. I know that he apparently was uh, partners with Sam Giancana. Well, the relationship with Frank Sinatra goes back when Frank Sinatra just started to become a popular entertainer. He was with the Dorsey Band in the early uh, mid-30s. And he had a contract with Dorsey, and uh, he would appear around the country. Yeah, well, I knew Tommy Dorsey, and so I can verify that story. When Sinatra sang for Tommy Dorsey with the Pied Pipers and made his big success, Tommy Dorsey signed him to a contract, 45%. That's pretty, I mean, that's, Tommy was a little dumb to do that. Now, Frank honored that contract. He always paid that 45%. But my God, when, you know, he's out in Hollywood make movies, all the money's going back to Tommy and his agents 15% and publicity 5%, but he, he was broke all the time. So he, he called New Jersey and he called his friends and said, God, what am I going to do? I, you know? So they went and, and said, we'll negotiate a new contract. So they went to Tommy Dorsey and said, we think, you know, that's a bad contract. Well, they were these people. Costello and all those people. And Tommy Dorsey was a little hesitant. And then somebody put a gun out on the table, and then somebody showed him how it worked in your mouth and all that kind of stuff. And Dorsey said, to him, gee, I think you're right. I think we ought to renegotiate a new contract. He said, no, we'll give you $30,000 and buy it out, and that was the end of that. But he has, he has a lot of problems, you know, problems with business. And... Uh, Things bother him, and they, sometimes they stay with him. And, and his attitude shows it sometimes. But he's strong enough. He, he overcomes a lot of it. You know, it's one thing. The guy, to me, the man is a little boy yet. Let me tell you why. Any guy has got a hobby is a little boy. Thinks, thinks young. Paints, plays with trains. You know, like I do model trucks. You tell me who? Sometimes I wonder. became very leery of any connection, particularly public connection, with anyone that had underworld connection. And that is why when my mother became involved with John Stampinato, she was so terrified that anyone would find out 
his connections. It was a different world then. It was not the world of the Bugsy Siegel, where they were dining with studio heads. Very different world in the 50s. Mickey Cohen was a bookmaker. You understand? That was considered legitimate business. But I think they had a little anti-Semitism going, because when they put him in jail, I was sitting in a black barber shop getting a haircut, and the black people just kept in and out, in and out. And I was talking about Mickey Cohen. And I said, isn't it a shame what they're doing to Mickey? And she said, yeah, really, blah, blah, blah.